everyone. Welcome back to Rally Caps. It's a podcast for artists, entrepreneurs, and everybody in between. I'm Steven. And I'm Eric. And today we're having a casual hang talking about YouTube. Yeah, we are. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> and that's all we talked about before we started recording. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to kind of, you know, shoot the breeze a little okay, bit. and Let's start it with, let's just get meta real quick. Whoa. No. Let's get Back YouTube to Mark Zuckerberg. Real quick. <laughs> uh, Digital homestead. We have we have upped the production value on the podcast yes. this year so far. Quite a bit. And to Steven's credit, we've been very consistent. We've been very consistent. Weekly. I'm so happy about that. One week I was a sad boy, and so you and Gene had to do an episode. <laughs> <laughs> and Gene and I were both very concerned the entire time. So it's we like talked about be- gear it's, the, it's like the best performing episode. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not in it. Well, we're like, cool, let's just talk about something that's so easy for people to listen to. And, that's and that gear. Eric can't hold it in the discussion. <laughs> it's about cameras. <laughs> Did you listen to it? I mentioned... because I, I, Yes, I, I listened to like 80% <laughs> of it. Yeah. I mentioned... So you heard the beginning then where I was like, I was doing a tally before that episode because we were talking about Canon versus tally Sony. Caps, if you will. And <laughs> that's really good, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're talking about uh, Canon versus Sony. It was a recent an episode a couple you know shows back and uh i was like going through a list of all the canon cameras that the three of us collectively have ever owned or currently own uh-huh. it was a ridiculous amount yes. it yes. was a ridiculous uh-huh. amount uh-huh. it's like almost every like every consumer to professional camera they've released in yeah. the past 10 years mm-hmm. yep at some point or another between the three of us and even like before digital with the 1v2 <laughs> yeah the 1v the three uh chad got the 1n too should have mentioned that but yeah great great film cameras Great film cameras. Yeah. But it, not to derail what we're talking about, but it does feel like all all of the camera stuff is really plateaued hard. Super hard. Yeah. Yeah. It feels a lot more about uh, vibes now than it does performance. Because every camera is essentially the same. Yeah. We're all like so numb to the, you know, FPS, crazy shutter, whatever. Like I do, I mean. I say that, and then I'm like, the A9 Mark III that Sony just released is actually oh. sick with the global shutter. Stuff like that is really interesting. Yep. But like, other than that, every cam is great. Like, every brand is doing amazing work. The stuff that gets people really excited, I think Fuji is a great testament to this. The X100V being resold for oh, yeah. a gazillion dollars, twice its brand new price. You, it's insane. Like that never happens for digital cameras. So yeah, and I think. Rumor has it that, what are we recording this day? It's 13th, 14th. 14th. Oh, happy Valentine's oh, Day, Steven. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I think actually when you're listening to this episode next week, um, rumor has it the X106 VI will be released. So I don't even know what, or I don't know what the name will be for that, but they've been going. 6VI? 6VI. I don't, what would they, actually, what would they call it? It's like a Star Wars episode now. Dude, it kind of is though. Yeah. Because they've, they've done so far, everything has been like X100 and then X100S for second, X100T for third. Why do brands do this? Oh, okay. That makes sense. It does make sense. X100F for four and then X100V for five because it went Roman numeral. This this reminds me of the Fast series. It kind of is (laughs) that. Fast five. (laughs) Furious seven. Seven. Too fast, too furious. That's one of my favorite videos internet on the internet videos. ever. It, it, oh my gosh. His reaction to it, it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. But yeah, so vibes are kind of like the, almost like the new currency for a lot of, a lot of yeah. cameras. As far as what we're doing production-wise on this podcast uh-huh. now up here, which will evolve all year, I'm sure, mm-hmm. will evolve lighting mm-hmm. and set design and we've even talked about getting a table in here to because yeah. today we're even cheating more towards each other because mm-hmm. i hate the head on the swivel thing it's not for three people and you're usually in the middle yeah it sucks not having fun. to go back and forth yeah. is, it's just uncomfortable uh-huh. for an hour but we have two c70s recording on the side yep. going in 2k log three yeah and then a c200 the old dinosaur camera which isn't rolling right now because we didn't charge the battery enough so you're only going to see that one for the beginning and end of this episode but for that reason. Our intention of doing this more mm-hmm. is because we uh, we sat down. I think part of the reason I was a sad boy the other week is because it felt like I I personally needed like more direction on what like, like. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
with all the things that we were doing um, because I, I just felt like we were floating in, in a bunch of ways. And so it was really good to sit down and have more clarity because then we talked about on the GBMS episode, like mm -hmm. what it looks like to, you know, what are our short term, medium, long term yes. goals are for that. We hashed all that out. Yep. And then for me with rally caps, like with how much I've grown to know the platform with mm -hmm. YouTube, I'm like, okay, well we need to have some sort of, more intentional strategy mm -hmm. with the video podcast. Yes. If we're going to do video, let's do it. Let's do it well. And so we got the AI cutting now, which I forget the brand name. Is it, um, what, what's the? Autopod. Autopod yeah. Um, which is so good. Insane. So it's, as I'm talking right now, and then. Hi, I'm talking over here. It's just automatically in the edit and premiere as a plug-in cutting back and forth between us. Probably seeing me right now, and Autopod is doing that all on its own. And then. It's really good. And then if we have a third camera, it'll cut to wide sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. Um, and it gives us the ability to have some sustainability, more yeah. sustainability in going weekly. Totally. And so as we talked about GBMS episode, Wednesdays are our days where we sit down and pod. Mm -hmm and our four hour segment. And so, and then with that more intentional thumbnails, yes. ones that feel more clickable, yes. just playing the YouTube game. Catering to YouTube more than creating like a catalog, which I think has been, it's, it is weird having to translate podcasting to YouTube in yeah. some senses, because most people show up to a podcast every week like I do with like some of my favorite shows. And I'm usually just listening to them personally. Right. I don't watch a ton Same. of podcasts on my own, but I just like to show up and have that download ready in my phone. I queue it up in Spotify or Apple and I'm just good to go and I'm just happy to listen to it. And mm. that's perfectly okay. That is where like the consistency comes in where it's like you just want to show up and know that your favorite people are gonna be there and you'll have an hour of them to enjoy on your commute. YouTube is a totally different analytical beast where you really do need to play more of a game mm -hmm. and have the multi-angle for better engagement, have thumbnails that are less about creating a catalog and more about clickability, like you said. Yeah. Like the Canada versus Sony episode is doing so well because the thumbnail is so sick. Yeah. Like it just, that's, yeah. that's the truth of it because that's sure. how stuff performs well on YouTube. Yep. So that, all of that, I think will be a huge catalyst for just better engagement on yep. YouTube in particular. It seems like things are going very well as far as downloads are concerned and streams on other, you know, not YouTube platforms, basically every the podcast provider. Um, uh, but yeah, I think I think this will be a really good year as far as the show is concerned, just like elevating it and yeah. refining it. And we, you've mentioned too, just putting a table in here, yeah. more of like Colin and Smear style, yeah. where it's like sitting around a round table, which I think could even be fun and open up possibilities to like decorate these sidewalls yes. that are... I thought you were going to say, open up this wall. <laughs> just punch right through it, dude. Just like those robbers in the building the other. three months ago did. <laughs> just punch right through the wall. To break into units. Because there's um, no studs in these walls. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just kind of like decorating the whole space. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I mean, while we're talking about it too, like what are some of the other last like little bits that we want to finish within the rally cap set? Specifically, we have like a few floating projects. Kind yeah. Of ready. Well, especially if especially if we do the table. Yeah. And really commit to that. Yeah. We're super inspired by Carlo and his podcast right now, mm -hmm. Creative Gap, and um, doing a lot more backlit stuff. Yeah. So cinematic yep. feeling, where I don't know if that's if we put more negative on this side and mm -hmm. then just push it from the back, mm -hmm. but we would we would be getting you know, lights up in the corners, up in the rafters, up mm -hmm. behind us to, to come down. Yep. But it could also mean that there's another light that's just like directly down into the table right here. Yep. All of this is really fun. What I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm coming to realize now with YouTube, what I'm really enjoying with this platform now is that we have built so much infrastructure between Creative Club and this studio mm. that it feels, it finally feels like we have things to talk about now. Totally. Whereas totally, before totally. with like building all of it, it felt so chaotic with yeah. like, what am I like? I'm in the middle of 17 different projects and I feel so lost. And so now, not that I've made anything on my main channel for a while, but it feels it, I've been making very consistent videos on the running channel. Mm -hmm. It just, is amazing to walk into this place and, and actually be very functional as is now. And now it just feels like we're putting a lot of icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. And that's incredibly powerful for YouTube. And like, we're going to get into it, but I look at a video, mm -hmm. like the video you just released today about mm -hmm. nice film lab. 
and the amount of vignettes with intentionality is absurd. Yeah. And uh, the the level of quality that brings to a YouTube video, because if we really break down YouTube, obviously we're thinking title thumbnail, super important. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Always. But that's where the podcast really struggles on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because you could have a great title, great thumbnail, mm-hmm. but they click it and they're like, oh, this is a hour long podcast. Bye. And then retention goes out the window yep. or they might stay or whatever. And you just have to kind of see if it works or yep. gamble on it. Yep. What's so powerful about what I was just bringing up with all the vignettes and the quality and the length of video, if that title and thumbnail is so good, and then you have a film or a video that can retain mm-hmm. attention, not just for the sake of editing for retention, no. but it's like, this is highly valuable, very engaging. Mm-hmm. And it, it literally compels people to stay, yep. not even have the thought of this is a 10 minute video. I'm not, I don't want to commit to it, yep. but it, it brings them in so quickly yep. and profoundly and retains them that then algorithmically the platform sees that yep. and is like, I'm going to push this to more people, which which is also the reason why I'm like, I would love to explore podcast episodes that do that. Like video essay style. At length. Yeah. Where it's like, let's just see what happens, yep. you know? Yeah. And then it doubles as an audio file yep. on the other uh, platforms yep. that also is just incredible to listen to. That's kind of a fun way to think about retention editing also, because I know generally speaking, that specific term, like, quote, retention editing, unquote, is more like Mr. Beast. Yes. Like that's what people think of when they hear retention editing because it's switching every one second. It's a different thing that's overstimulating you to just keep you watching. Mm -hmm. But there's almost like a flip side to it of like, no, I have valuable information. That valuable information is worth listening to. Yes. But it needs to be presented in a clear and concise way that won't have the same impact if I try to force feed it to you. Yes. So I'm going to retention edit for your benefit in a way that's beautiful and not super flashy not as intense but it's still going to keep you retained if, if you zoom out to the actual creator side of this thing uh-huh. you look at beastification that uh-huh. whole model that's so funny that that's even a, a thing it yeah. only is successful with a ton of money yeah. because you need a team of people editing these videos to pump them out as fast as they're going yep. to have because editing a video like that is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work it's absurd. Yeah. Like to, to have to cut an angle every two to five seconds and put all the assets and text and audio, like it's, it's wild. Yeah. So a full editing team that is doing that makes it possible and sustainable for those brands because they are bringing enough money to sustain the salaries of the people doing that. Yep. And so if you're trying to do that as a solopreneur and you're putting yourself up against that and saying, I need to edit that fast. I need to put this much strength and mm. like craziness into each edit. Mm-hmm. Absolute recipe for burnout, absolute res- recipe for unsustainability. Mm-hmm. And I think that is that is what I'm feeling on my main channel. It's like mm. I started getting into videos where they were doing really well, yeah. but I was taking so long to edit them. Not in a sense okay. of like they need to be perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm like, this is the, the quality. This is how much I want it to be. Like I want it to be this so robust, good. this good. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just need to reframe my mind. Yeah. I actually still think I want to do that. I just want to extend the timelines more. Yeah. Like I want it to be that high quality. Yep. I don't necessarily need it to be as retention based mm-hmm. where it's like asset on the screen every five to 15 seconds. But I want to put that much time and energy into that thing and mm-hmm. stretch it out longer. Because for me personally, where I'm at right now, I'm now entering into the first year where like, Things are so diversified Mm -hmm. that I don't like truly really don't have to give any specific attention to one thing regularly to do the weekly thing. Oh, yeah. But I'm kind of in the the, the, in the realm of what I talked about with Beast and that I just hired Cyrus. Right. And he's able to pump out a weekly video on the running channel. I was going to say, yeah, there's consistency there. But I'm paying for it. You're paying for it and... You've also explained to you, like, it's so much easier to put together one of those videos because you can sit down and talk about a run that you were on yes. for 30 minutes, make some cuts, add some Strava screen grabs, and that's basically the video because yeah. that's the stuff people want to hear. Yeah. Well, but what's funny now is, like, as the 
quality has been elevating mm-hmm. and we've been putting more time and attention to it. Do you it's feel like, like you're kind of screwing yourself because now yeah. it's taking more time? Okay. Yeah. It, it isn't though. Okay. Um, it is still so much easier Okay. because... I've found that that niche is really interested in sitting and listening. Yeah. And they're not, they don't have like a goldfish retention. Right. Which is really cool. Right. And also Cyrus brought this up, which is also amazing and, and, um, speaks to, speaks volumes to hiring somebody who knows the industry, knows yeah. the niche. Cyrus has been working with a professional triathlete for the past half year. Yeah. And he's been making all of the, those YouTube videos. And he's realizing, especially in the world of triathlon, but also mm. marathon and running, people are on the treadmill. Like there's a good <laughs> yeah. amount of people yeah. who are literally running on a treadmill yeah. and will just let the video play That's all the way through. Yeah. And they'll do that with like a handful of videos for their whole workout. It's almost like a podcast in a sense. It is. Some of, some of the videos at least. Not all of your videos, but like some could be consumed just by listening. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially since mine have engaging music and yeah. theme and, you know, hmm. but we are, we are going off like, so right now we're in the, my Boston training block yeah. We're four episodes in yeah. and we've, we've kind of come up with this strategy. We're realizing that since that retention is so good mm-hmm. and the videos perform so well with that retention, let's make the videos 15, almost 20 minutes long. Okay. Is uh, that different from the Chicago one? Where you did you yes. have like a target time in mind for vi- each video? No. Okay. It was Chicago just like, was just like however it plays out, cool. But now that I've realized, and you have to recognize that YouTube is going to favor its position in ad placement. Mm. So algorithmically, it makes sense that it's going to favor videos that are over eight minutes because they can roll mid roll ads. True. So. If you have a 16-minute yeah. video that has really, really, really good retention, yeah. that has a much better chance of getting put into recommended. And that's where th- thumbnail and title come back mm-hmm. in. Interesting. Because if you give it a chance to do that, then you have then you have this kind of shiny object mm-hmm. in recommended where people are clicking on it, but then it's the self-reinforcing. Like if if the video is really good and engaging. And so, and we've we've kind of figured out that model, I think. I've, I've taken just bits and pieces from everywhere, sort of a Casey Neistat model, where like each of these videos we're, we're thinking through a framework of three chapters mainly. Yeah. Um, w- maybe it's two workouts and then one other talking head thing. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, they don't have to be sequential, mm-hmm. but as long as it has three main components, that really fills up that like 12 to 18 minute totally. video length. You mentioned Casey, and I have to say it. His his <laughs> video was so good. The sub three, the impossible dream. Yeah, Sisyphus. Holy cow! P- yeah, that I've video seen, was sick. I've seen some comments saying that's like one of his best videos of all time. I think it's definitely up there. Well, it reminds me of like his his like OG Nike ad days. Yes, with that level of just raw creativity. Mm-hmm. And the person that he hired to do the animation of Sisyphus pushing the boulder up so the mountain cool. was. So good. Yep. At first, I was like, when on earth did he have time to do this? And I, I saw the credits. So I was like, okay, he hired someone. Good. Okay. I was like, that must have taken so long. Yeah. Like that stop motion style oh, is crazy. so cool. But mm-hmm. holy cow, production quality was like off the charts. It was so good. I think that's also what's really cool about creator economy now is that there's there's so much. Samir? Is that oh. you? <laughs> creator economy? Agnostic of my own <laughs> ideas. <laughs> um <laughs> What's really sweet is that there's been such a democratization of these mediums mm. that there are so many willing and available talented artists yeah. that can be hired to do stuff like that. Mm. That's approachable at an approachable price for other creators to make something, mm-hmm. especially as you get funding, as you get sponsorships, as you have your own digital assets, all that stuff. You can then justifiably hire a really talented person to do something like that, mm. especially if you know the video and the idea is going to be one of your top tens or whatever. Cause that ad, I mean that animation for me, honestly, like kind of sold the video. I was yes. like, that is so powerful to see that. And it's the core tenant of the video too. Like he built his whole arc of chasing a sub three hour marathon around Sisyphus and the impossible dream. Yep. I, I, I don't know. I just, it was, it was, it was so good. Yep. And it's a cool way to highlight artists that maybe that person who did it, I don't know who they are. 
uh, but maybe they don't care to have a YouTube channel. They just like to make stuff like right, that. Right. You can still highlight their work and hopefully he gets hired, he or she, whoever they are, gets hired to do more stuff like that in the yep. future because they deserve to have their work seen. It's so 100%. clever, so good. Like mm -hmm. it's they probably hear that, right? <laughs> I think that's a pretty loud that. one. <laughs> That's, that's a siren. It is still, I will say it it's every time. It's a crime that he's <laughs> not crime. getting recognized more for his stop motion work. I knew there was like a, there was something in there. I that was used. borderline Jerry Seinfeld for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crime. It's a crime. <laughs> it's still, I'll, say, I'll say it every time. It's amazing to me that we were six stories up and we hear that stuff so clearly. So loud. Out of the wind. It's insane. Yeah. I don't understand it. But all of that to say, YouTube is weird. So weird, It's man. so weird. It's so weird and so fun and such and a gut awful. punch and so exhilarating. <laughs> and it's so, so weird. It's truly the Wild West. It is. You have, there, there is no, like, there's no way to anticipate what can happen on the platform. Think of how exciting it is that Ryan Trahan did what he did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. With his candy brand. Yeah. I, like that was one of the most inspirational things I think I've ever seen on YouTube. It was so good. I can't remember the the brand name. Joyride. Joyride. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like clearly knew that the thumbnail was clickbait. Uh -huh. This is my last video, and it's a very typical Ryan thumbnail yeah. with just an iPhone shot of him. Mm -hmm. And when it went into full blown production, mm -hmm. I was just like, "No way he didn't," because Ryan never does that. No. Ever. His whole style is iPhone. Yes. And so to break out of that universe, you're yeah. like, whoa, this is special. This whoa, is very whoa, whoa. special. Like he actually committed. In the cameos he got in that? Unbelievable. Insane. I know. Mark Rober popping up. I was uh -huh. like, that's so fun. So I, if you have not watched that, absolutely. I, I'm sure you have because I'm sure, mm -hmm. it's, you know, at the time you're listening to this, it was probably trending for probably 10 days or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then also... You have this creator who's now coming in with this massive audience who's now like making big candy shake in their boots mm -hmm. because he's like, I'm challenging the way you do stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm making it better and healthier for people, mm -hmm. an alternative option. And even I was reading through the website and seeing the branding and stuff. And it, it's like, it also said, enjoy responsibly. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he's not, he's not being like candy's healthy for you, mm -hmm. but he's like, if you're going to eat candy, let it be a healthier option. Mm -hmm. And like clearly there's some sort of mirroring of, of what Jimmy's doing with chocolate and, totally. and this, like clearly it's successful, but it was just so impressive. Did Jimmy kind of, did he, I, I haven't really followed along with like the, the candy stuff he's done. Did he plant a flag and like making it healthy or is it just supposed to be candy? He, he did. He I did. think, okay. I think he said it, it was, it was better ingredients and, gotcha. and, but I think he kind of, Got his feet held to the fire a bit about with it. with that. Yeah, he it's has, chocolate. He, I, I was gonna say, yeah, he has with a few things now. It's, it with can the, be it can kind of feel controversial when your audience is so young, you know, that yeah. you're selling something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. That's towing the line for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like Ryan's approach a ton, though, because <laughs> it's it's not like healthy candy is new, but it's enough of an uncharted territory that he can make it cool. Which I think is really neat, because it looks almost like, uh, like a like a fruit roll up. Yes. Like a healthy fruit roll up. Yeah. And you, I feel like we've all had like the dried fruit roll up things before. Yeah. And those are all like eh. fine, you yeah. know, like eh, for for like true health nuts that are like I just want a little something sweet. I know for me, I love like the dried mango from Trader Joe's. That is like yeah. that is candy to me. I yeah. love that stuff. But I think it's very cool that he can he can find a way to use his influence for something that he genuinely cares about and can have the potential at least to make some positive change. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. I loved the graphic that he had of like, this is my stuff. It's a natural color. Yeah. This is what everything else looks like. Yeah. That's not a natural color. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. When you put it like that. Yep. Yeah. All of it was so Neon compelling. blue doesn't come from a free. <laughs> no. <laughs> <It's> wild. <laughs> what I loved going back to the democratization of, of creativity and mm -hmm. hiring creative people, mm -hmm. I feel horrible for not knowing their names. Sticks. Sticks. Mm -hmm. So they've been doing the series of making a movie about huge YouTubers mm -hmm. and they did the production for this. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it was nowhere near the price of full blown production of that quality mm -hmm. for any LA mm -mm. 
company no, no. would provide. Like I think they did get, shoot it on an Alexa, which I thought was sick. Yeah, it, they totally rented. But but stuff. I love that though. Like yeah. they still brought. Because you're right. They probably they brought insane production value for I like you said assuredly a fraction of the cost. Because I know, like I've known Ryan enough from a periphery to yeah. see like. I can't imagine he would want to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a drop like that. And maybe it no. was. I mean, it could have been. But, um, and not to say that that work isn't worth it or that way, but the reality is times are changing. Mm -hmm. And you are really seeing competition come into the playing field here where you're like, mm -hmm. these guys built their career on YouTube by featuring doing these movies of these people to mm. gain attention, got in the pocket of Ryan Trahan, mm. and all of a sudden they just made one of the biggest ads on YouTube mm. ever. And it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff fires me up. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. On our own scale right now, a conversation I just had yesterday with Koros, the watch brand yes. I've been using, incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. Because it feels like after two years on the documentary and mm. all the things we've been building and even me personally making the connection to Koros through my own running endeavors, yep. my own running channel. My own running channel is what got me talking to this brand. Mm -hmm. They are now a potential brand that could come alongside for the documentary and sponsorship right. potentially. Yep. They, we are now going to forge conversations of doing production for athletes, yeah. like huge running athletes mm -hmm. who are Koros uh, sponsored. And then we get to, now we have this massive asset of a documentary where it's like, well, yeah, this is, yep. this is what we are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. And some of the, the discussions we were having where it's like, we could even direct from afar mm -hmm. and send, uh, you know, a couple people from creative club mm -hmm. out to go do one of these shoots. Yep. Or just work with the network of friends and people that we've met across the States. Yes. Yes. People because don't even I have brought to travel up Chris at that point. Right. It's like, oh, if you have enough people that you trust that are in each time zone, right. oh, they can easily handle something, send raw footage, done. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll get to editing here. We don't have to travel at all. We've proven that we can direct, that we can shape the story. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be the boots on the ground necessarily. Mm -hmm. You bring it back to cut here. Mm -hmm. And as long as we have all the assets we need mm -hmm. and all the video we need, Great. Very exciting. They, we had like we had a storyboard. We did everything. Yeah. Yep. It's insane to have a, a featured documentary as a portfolio piece. It's great. <laughs> like outside of even it, which it's funny to say that, but like there's there's the potential of sponsorships for the in person premieres, mm -hmm. which by the time you're hearing this, there might be news about that. There, yeah, there is for sure. De definitely, yeah. if this is coming out on Monday. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. Outside of the potential of it even getting purchased by oh, someone this money sorry maybe not maybe not so, yeah, you, you, yeah if, you, if you do you know yeah, you'll, you'll know um if someone wants to purchase it that's also very cool but you, like that aside just having it as like this is something we did we made this big big is big crazy thing. Yeah. because that is something that so few other people right. have like a cohesive hour plus long story yeah. with the production value that it has mm -hmm. over the course of time that we shot it in is is very rare yeah and very exciting Speaks volumes to what we're capable of doing, yes. for sure. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, it, yeah, that was the first time I've really used the documentary in that way where I'm like, whoa, yeah. We can we, start to we, leverage that. We did do this. Check it out. Yeah. And yeah, it makes so much sense. And the way it lined up, too, I was like, Joe was using Koros the yeah. entire time. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I know we have actually, we that, actually have great makes, footage of him sense. from, I think it was like the last, the last workout one. Mm -hmm. before CIM. He got his new watch. He yeah. did. It was that white watch. It was that cold November day, uh -huh. super sunny. There's actually some really beautiful stuff in there. Going back to YouTube in this conversation, like we're starting to formulate packages of what these sponsorships can look like within the doc premieres. Yep. Where we're like, part of it could be an integration on a YouTube video, the coverage of the event. Mm -hmm. Like it's so it's, and then you're leveraging the YouTube channel against the event as well. Right. And it's so multifaceted. And this is what I mean by the diversification where we're sitting, like we're just sitting in a place where a brand comes to us and they're like, okay, yeah, wow, that's really compelling. Mm -hmm. That's really, really interesting. And at the very least, like maybe just a small check here just to see yep. what this is like yep. and, and what, the audience or how the audience responds, but it's really the onus is on them to be like, how big is this thing going to be? And do we really, do we want to be a part of it? Cause yeah. if we don't, we might miss out on a big opportunity. Oh yeah. 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 
Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's very exciting. It's very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. The YouTube integration into that is, is very cool. Yeah. But YouTube for 2024. Yeah, let's talk about the video you just made today. Uh, yeah, I just dropped. Uh, today is the the yeah Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day, like we mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, I dropped a YouTube is my Valentine. YouTube. Hey, Valentine, I heart you. I say Valentine. YouTube. I <laughs> oh Valentine, I love YouTube. And this is where we do our ad read on those little heart candies. We're releasing them today. Yeah, GBMS on each of the little heart candies. <laughs> <laughs> Get bored, make soup. <laughs> Kipboard makes sweets. Come on. Kipboard. Oh, dang it. It was right there. <laughs> make soup. <laughs> okay, but seriously. Anyway. Kipboard um, makes stuff. Go yeah. get your merch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, no, but seriously, your video. No, but seriously, go buy our stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you can use Rally Caps 10 at checkout if you want to take 10% off Great. of your GBMS in order. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have free stuff on the website. Okay, yep. Go check mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. Love, love, love. Very much love. Um, yeah, I, I dropped a video today about uh, a partnership that I've had with a film lab in Brooklyn, New York, for the last nine months uh, called Nice Film Club. And it was a very fun video to make. Yeah. It is, in my opinion, I think my most cohesive, polished video yet. And I feel very good about it. And I think there's a lot that I learned in the process of making it that I want to incorporate in future videos. Sponsors aside, like just the production timeline of things, uh, focal lengths that I'll use, audio, like lighting. I went ham with gobos on this one, which was very fun and added so much texture and dimension to everything. Um, Little inserts in the spotlight, if you don't know what a gobo is. Yes, yeah, which is, it's just really fun. We need to, I really want to look at other inserts that we can get. Oh, for sure. And just find other other variations. But the three Mm -hmm. that Aperture includes with the spotlight are are all great, Um, but it's been, so fun to, I th- I'm trying to break down like exactly, I'll start simple and get deeper. But like one thing that stood out to me from this is that I really enjoy shooting talking heads at longer focal lengths. Yeah. There is a, um, I almost liken it to like medium format film because mm. there is a compression and a depth to the image that I think is awesome. Mm-hmm. And technically, you can also just boom closer to yourself yes. because you're punched in further, mm-hmm. which is another really great advantage because audio can be super crisp. You can get the boom right up on your mic. And in our studio, one thing that I was concerned about was doing all these different vignettes all throughout and trying to match the audio to kind of keep it as consistent as possible all throughout uh, and being able to shoot it. I basically was, I took my Canon RF 2470 just used at 70 for every single vignette. And then I was able to basically get the mic in the same place every single time Mm -hmm. because I was framing myself up similarly each time, which I think made for a pretty consistent little clip of audio throughout the entire thing. It sounded so uniform across. Yeah, okay. But you did have have a lav in one. I did, and I didn't even use that audio. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I I used it on the very first one verse scene that I filmed, and then I I listened to it back, and I was honestly like, I think I just like the boom more for this circumstance. It honestly played to your benefit because as I was watching, I was like, wow, he really matched that audio very well to the boom. I'm like, it sounds exactly the same. That's awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah. It was, so, a, it was a crime. It, how, <laughs> how well that audio. Man, dude, that audio was criminal. So good, man. It made me feel like there was an emergency. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I hope they hear the sirens. I hope they, if not, they're going to sound like a psycho. <laughs> um, so that was the first thing that I, I like. Once I did it for the first scene, I was like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Anytime I have a talking head, at least, I just want to shoot it on a longer focal length because I just, I really love the look of that. It looks very good. It, it, it feels good. It, it feels, feels very you. Yeah, I, I like it. I think I, it's funny. Once I made the connection to um, medium format film, I was like, okay, game over. That's That's it for me. Because yeah. that's that's the look that I really love in my own photo work. And if I can try to get something close to that in my video work, great. In a, in a realm of YouTube where you're filming yourself, that's where if you're going to go with that approach, it's just like how if you don't have help, you need autofocus. Like there's just yeah. no like. Oh, yeah. It's impossible because a lot of people with a desk set up, they're like shooting 16, 15 mil right here. <laughs> right, yeah. And they're just like reaching <laughs> right, to yeah. the camera to yeah. be like, that's in focus. Great. Yep. 
But if you're all the way across the room, mm -hmm. like you need one of those styrofoam heads or something. something. And to me, that barrier, breaking all of those barriers mm -hmm. is what keeps me away from making stuff so often. Mm -hmm. So again, going back to having these sets mm -hmm. and all this stuff at our fingertips right here, it takes away all of that friction. Yep. Not all of it, but a lot of it so that you're challenged in making something that is exceptional versus what you would do if you didn't have the place. Yep. I wanted to talk about your your ad read in it because it, <laughs> it, it was genius, man, Thank like you. the way you did it. So just kind of describe your mindset. Let me preface it. Yes. So you were delivering straight to camera mm -hmm. and you're like, this video is sponsored and you turn to the side 90 degrees in another beautiful vignette, but felt very much like I'm looking at the side of this scene. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like, hold up. I'm not here to get a bag. I actually pitched this to the brand and you went like full transparent mode. You're like, mm -hmm. I'm not even getting paid. I'm just getting the best sponsor. I'm getting the best deal with them, their mm -hmm. best package. Mm -hmm. And again, this was fully my idea. I've mm -hmm. been on board with them for nine months mm -hmm. and this just makes sense. Mm -hmm. So hear me out. And with that being said, let me share why I love it so much. Yep. I thought it brought so much credibility to the video in a way that any haters like, well, I can't argue with that. Yeah. So thought process on that. That was my hope yep. was like, I just want to immediately, cause I think I get to that part roughly like at the 40 second mark. So mm -hmm. pretty, pretty early on in the video. And I mean, I know how I feel every time I'm watching a video and an ad pops up. Sometimes it feels well integrated. Oftentimes it doesn't. And I wanted to just completely rip, down any potential bias that people could have looking at that and thinking about it. I was like, I've got nothing to lose because I genuinely believe in this. Like, yeah. they're not waiting for this video to pop off. They're not looking at analytics. We're doing this because we just think it fits and it works well. And ultimately, it's a discount for people in a limited capacity because it's not even something that they can afford to do a ton of. Yeah. They're not trying to like, blow the doors off and ruin a good thing. Right. They're trying to just bring people in slowly and accommodate Smart. new film photographers. Yeah. Like it's they, incredibly wise. They, they're, they're very, very good at what they're doing right now. Yeah. Like they have a very good head on their shoulders and yeah. that's why I like working with them too. Like they, they know what they're about and uh, yeah, it's true. Like I, I had to pitch them on this. I first mentioned it to them back in September and they're like, ah, like maybe uh, we just got to you know, talk about it a little bit more and like a month or two passes. And then I got on a call with the founder of the company and a couple of my contacts there. And we talked about it more and then they were super on board. Um, and we just had to like slowly go back and forth and figure out what was going to be the best fit as far as like, how is the discount going to work? Uh, how many people can use it? Yeah. You know, we don't want to, you know, tear down any dams here and just ruin our whole operation. We just want to like, Make sure we're doing this right. Which, like, you've seen internet videos where people blow the frick up. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, I haven't slept in seven days mm -hmm. because I'm fulfilling orders. Yeah. Yep. And that's the reality of the internet, too. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> too much success is also really bad. Yeah. Like, and then you just completely fold in on yourself mm -hmm. and your brand's gone. Yep. Um, so really cool to hear that. I didn't even think about that component. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's true too. Cause like, it cause is, the video is good enough where like it could, it could. yeah, it, it and could so be they're like, something. They're like, make it private. They're like, okay, uh, only 20 people. I'm like, great. That's fine. Because then also, cause we've already talked about doing more videos in 2024 together. And I think that's just going to be the model each time is like yeah. the first 20, maybe 25, eventually people that use this can get a discount on their membership. Otherwise you can't, you can just get like the standard, like you know, whatever bonus role of Devin scan, which is also great, but they, they never offer like cash discounts yeah. on the memberships. So that exclusivity and that, uh, like availability each drop, so to speak, yeah. um, I think makes it all the more compelling for people to actually sign up and be really excited about it. Uh, while also giving them like an insane, like that's the, I think that's the easiest part about all this is like nice is doing such a good job and the values there, yeah. like it's easy for me to tell people about because it sells itself. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten so many DMs about nice specifically over the last nine months. I was like, it just makes more sense for me to make a video and talk about all this yes. rather than responding individually each time. And just because it's more link. compelling for me to tell them about that too. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. like, let me tell you with my own voice instead of typing out all these responses to your questions. Yep. I want you to like it because it's going to save you money in mm -hmm. the long run. 
And I say that in the video too. I'm like, I want this to be more accessible to people. This is a service that can do that for you. For sure. It was very fun. The, and to get meta again, this is, I think I've been watching some of the rally caps episodes mm. and, and like seeing my seasonal depression on my face <laughs> and my affect. And like, clearly if you listen regularly, you see like how much more chipper I am today yeah. because not, not that like I want the work that we do to dictate my mood. It is going to inevitably sometimes, Yeah. but th like this, this kind of substance in these episodes is what I'm so excited about. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, if you are just kind of flying by the seat of your pants and not making things intentionally, you have nothing to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not interesting. Yeah. And that's, what's so hard. I think that's where a lot of the friction for myself has been with like a, a podcast episode every week. Right. Where it's just like, sometimes that's how it is. Yes. You know? Yeah. And, but, um, having these, these, concrete things working in the background with uh -huh. intentionality. I also think just a moment of, um, of exposing myself as well. I've really not wanted to talk about my running very much, mm. but the reality is I need to start mm. doing that yeah. because as much as you guys might not want to hear about running, at least the business and creative side might yeah. be interesting enough oh, yeah. because it's so much of what I do now. Yes. Yeah. And so for me to be like, I can't really talk about anything. I'm not making anything on the like sure, the quote the unquote creative side. side. Right, right, right. Because I'm finding so much fulfillment in using my creativity in this one specific thing. Which is a cool angle. It's really fun. Yeah, to bring that level of production to something that never sees that. And it's it's being mentioned in the comments nonstop. But then to have sponsors mm -hmm. and brands and getting paid for doing that thing, I'm just like, do I pour all my gas on this fire? I don't want to. Yeah. But I'm pouring a lot of gas on it right now. I mean, you're paying an employee to focus specifically on that. Yeah. So. Well, I was all last year without getting paid for it. Right. Yeah. That's on true. the hope and dream that true. it would be successful. So yeah, now that yeah. it is, I'm like, okay, let's go. True. Yeah. Um, so like all last year, Shua was, I mean, dur during our marathon series, he's putting weekly episodes out. Yeah. Which again, the intentionality of doing that and them being good. Yeah amazing for YouTube. Oh, truly. Yeah. One of my favorite things to look at analytically on, on a channel that is posting regularly is how the baseline, like after, obviously you have your peaks mm -hmm. of a video happening, but like six days later, where mm -hmm. does it sit in the Valley? Because that tells you how much recurring views you have on your library. Yeah. And watching that number grow is, is my favorite analytic to yep. look at, to see like, Oh wow. Every week, we're getting X amount of views more in the, in the valley yeah. of posting. Right. And seeing that line just on an upward curve is really encouraging yeah. um, because that is how a YouTube library works. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to get back to feeling that excited about my main channel too. For sure. And now that I have, um, you know, since Shua left, I've just been four or five months of like, I can't balance all this on my own. Right. But now, now that Cyrus is here, you know, we've been planning him coming for three months. Uh, now that he's finally here, it just feels like a whole new world <laughs> is, is really opening up for myself and being able to, like, realize what new creative things I, I can make mm -hmm. outside of running now. Um, because that is kind of all I focused on by myself yep. when he wasn't here. For sure. And it also makes me really scared about, like... When he leaves. Cyrus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like, oh, man. Yeah. Well, you know? I mean, he just got here. I know. <laughs> but does, like, that's where my mind goes. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, do I, do I move forward only dependent on having an employee or do I build the yeah. infrastructure of all the things I do to be able to do it on my own? The truth is I can't. I was going to say the volume, the volume is just crazy. Can't. Yeah. That's not a one person thing. And that's why, like, rally caps, we need Chad's help. Yep. Um, with producing and editing and like, it just needs to be a team effort in one way. Oh, we've quoted our friends at Sunny 16 before, but filmmaking is a team sport. Yeah. It literally is mm -hmm. like, w if you want the productions to get bigger and better and more polished and the workflows to be more equitably distributed, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. Got to have a team. Yeah. I also want to just mention what you, I, I think you, you said like, um, when you see yourself in some of the the rally caps episodes and you're like, Oh, I can like see on my face. Like, Oh, I'm not like as into, you know, that day or like the seasonal depression thing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been thinking about the show as a whole 
like YouTube conversation aside a little bit, I think this is maybe more so for like the, the listening experience, but I think there's something to be said about like our catalog being a living, breathing relationship with our listeners. Yeah. And I want to incorporate more episodes where it's just like, what's going on with you? Yeah. Like you, me and Gene, just like, we're just kind of shooting the breeze a little bit. Yeah. And it's not always a teaching thing. For sure. It's just like, hey, we're just here to have a we're conversation. Because again, like speaking from personal experience with the podcast that I'm subscribed to and listen to every single week, I'm going to listen to it no matter what. Yeah. And I'm kind of into it if it's not always the same level of like production or value. Like I, I think it's nice to provide value on the show. Yeah. But I think, I think, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, we could leave a little uh, question in Spotify, which we've been trying to do a little bit more of now, so you can engage with it there and leave a response. But I think it's more relationship-based than just, like, value, value, yeah. value, value. Like, people want to just, like, what's up? How are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. It could be a little more conversational. Mm -hmm. It could be less, here's the topic, here's the outline, go. Yeah. There can be some weeks where it's just, like, what's up? How's it going? Mm -hmm. How are you guys just mm -hmm. checking in with each other? Yeah. I think that's kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's like part of the beauty of podcasting is like, there can be a little bit more of like that, that back and forth. Mm -hmm. There can be some, some turbulence, if you will. Yeah. A little, little bit of change of paces throughout, mm -hmm. because if you're putting an episode out a week, why not just kind of like, I mean, I'm changing, I'm changing paces every day <sighs> with my running. Oh, it's a running. Ah, <laughs> it was a running joke. <laughs> I mean, most days I'm not changing paces. It's it's easy running 80-20 rule. You obviously, know? yeah. That's how I run is 80-20. <laughs> Usually 80% on the couch, 20% in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's... I, I get excited on days like today seeing you have more clarity in your work mm -hmm. as well because it gets me fired up about the conversations we have where there's intersection and overlapping on yeah. all the disciplines that we're doing individually. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I really relate to that thing. Yes. I'm inspired by what you did to pitch them that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that feels so counterintuitive to the typical brand sponsorship thing that happens. Yes. And you kind of take the reins and you're like, yes. hey, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. I like you guys. It's going to be better for both of us if we just do this thing. Yep. Just like, let me. Hey. Yep. Hey, look at me. I'm the captain now. Exactly. L we're going to do this. I promise it's going to be good. Yeah. Hey, this could be a good thing for you. <laughs> That's just a I'm so determined to make that in every episode. That's a t-shirt we make. <laughs> that is. This could be a good thing for you. Actually, also, I realized I was on a train of thought of like things that I really enjoyed about the video making process that I learned. The two other things that I think stood out to me in that were... I don't mind talking heads as much if I'm changing scenes per thing. Yeah. I think that makes it more fun also mm -hmm. because I just found it more engaging to even watch myself and yes. edit when there's different scenes, uh -huh. which I enjoy. I don't usually do that. And I think I will do more of that in the future because it, it I, feels like the three chapter thing. It does. And yeah. I don't, I don't mind. I, th I think I used to think, and when Gina and I talked about this a lot, we're like, oh, we don't want to make like talking head videos anymore. And like, I still don't want to do that every single time, but this at least makes it better. And I've realized there's things that I just want to communicate that are just communicated look best at, yeah. looking at the camera because mm -hmm. that's okay. And I think what you've mentioned too about, you know, YouTube favoring longer form videos and things of that nature too, it's fine to sit down and talk like that if you have good things to say. Yes. And write it down, write it down, plan it out. make it great and make it beautiful uh -huh. too. Like it honestly didn't take a ton of time to set up each of those vignettes it, like at all. Yeah, it really didn't. Like I splashed a gobo in the back of each scene for the most part and a softbox and a softbox and I boomed a mic and the C stand for that mic is on wheels. Again, so like it was pretty simple. Speaking to the studio, beautiful studio. Yeah. yeah. And that was worth the time to yeah. put into this place to mm -hmm. make it so nice. Yes. So that was the other thing is like, I don't hate talking head stuff as much anymore. And I'll definitely be putting more effort into the setup and also just like diversity of shots so that it's even less boring to make instead yeah. of all in one go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, great. I felt like I brought better energy to each of those sections 
because I was starting fresh. And yeah. it was the only section that I recorded that day instead mm -hmm. of doing a marathon, like four hours of yeah. recording. And I look exhausted by the end of it. Yeah. So I felt like I had a, just a better affect on camera also, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. And I think the last thing is definitely something I can't remember. <laughs> well, I was going to mention, or do you want to think about it first? Oh, I think I've already said it, Gobos. Oh, yeah. I'm completely obsessed with it right now. I feel like it's I'm going through cool. my spotlight moment that you had when you were doing yeah. the, the uh, circular, circular, just like using uh -huh. that as like, it's it's very nice for texture and backgrounds. Oh, yeah. And it just, it instantly makes it look more <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Light changes everything. It light truly changes everything. And it's again, very fun. And friction. If you have five, six different lights, yeah. it's a lot to set up, it a is. lot to reposition, a lot to dial in. Yep. Just a lot. Yes. Um, what I was going to mention about, you finished your thought? Mm -hmm. Go, Bo. Um, yep. What I was going to mention, going back to the sponsor thing, um, now that I am officially a BPN athlete, yes. they approached me with that mentality. I wasn't like actively searching out a sponsorship. I didn't even know that that was like something like that was w within reach of me yeah, yet, yeah. but they saw the potential and reached out to me. Yes. And the deal, and like the deal was so compelling in that it was like no <laughs> other sponsorship I've ever engaged with where they fully and straight up and meant it. were like, you do you. Yeah. It's a bananas. Good deal. <laughs> they were like, just integrate it into what you already do. Yeah. We know you love the product. You've been testing it for a few months. Just, we won't even like follow up with you yeah. on it. Like we know we trust you. And like, of course we'll watch your stuff. Like, and they do, they cheer you on. It's yeah. like, it's incredible. Yep. And I'm like, okay, that is unbelievably sustainable from a sponsorship perspective. And it's different when it comes to like the athletic world, just because it's like, it's just so ingrained in the things we're doing, mm -hmm. which it can be in like the filmmaking photography world, but you have to say it's a, a like a aperture light. Yeah. Then you always have to be shooting BTS to show the integration. Mm -hmm. Running is running and I'm, I'm fueling during running and I'm mm -hmm. anything I'm doing before or after is like, I'm doing electrolytes and like all, all of this eating and drinking of stuff. Yeah. It's a consumable product too. It's so and much it's, easier to sell. And then it's repetitious. It's, People yeah. are, we all need it over yeah. and over to keep running. Yep. It's much easier to convince someone to buy a $30 jar of electrolytes versus a $500 light if that is the thing that you're selling. Absolutely. Every time. Even if they end up spending that much over time on yep. that thing. Mm -hmm. But 500 up front for this one thing is like, I don't know about that. Like, exactly. It could be kind of tough. But it's that that kind of like, perpetual rhythm of whatever the thing, the service, the product, whatever it is, uh, that I think is a lot more mm -hmm. compelling. And to go back to like the Coros sponsorship, then, I mean, I'm talking to a new rep there mm -hmm. and the first couple of videos, it was kind of like sort of the same thing. Yeah. Like we trust you do what you do, but it also like, what about this idea? And I'm like, nope, mm -hmm. just let me, just trust me. Mm -hmm. I made the first two videos and then the new rep came to me and was like, we, we loved them. Yep. And now it's more of a perspective of like, I think you just let us know what you're thinking moving yeah. forward yep. and let's entertain. And now I'm kind of in that position where you were with nice, where it's like, I want to draft up what I think is going to be best for both of us mm -hmm. and let's pursue that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really cool. I love jumping on calls like this and getting creative because he was talking about how they really want to focus on training load, which is this graph over time that shows as you progress through is that um, a feature in the watch. Yeah. Gotcha. Like in, and in their app, as you progress through a training block, you yeah. see the intensity trend go up. Gotcha. And so you want to, you want to make sure that that graph of intensity is increasing before your taper, before the race. Gotcha. And he's like, we posted something with a pro ultra runner today. And I was like, I saw that post and they post a line graph of his intensity. And I looked at it. I'm like, that's a plot diagram. For story like it's a it's an exposition that's a funny. rising action climax and resolution that's funny. and i'm like yeah, yeah yeah what if we just make a video about my intensity trend but we after boston we go through the story all of the footage uh, of the training block and cool. tell the story that's cool and that's why full circle moment why i think the casey video is so profound yeah and why a video very similar 
that I made on the channel, which yeah. zoomed out on my running experience, did so well, yep. is because it does the same. It's the same principle. Yep. It's that plot arc of very classic exposition, rising action, climax, yep. resolution. We talk about that often. I feel like lately in particular. It's a crime that we don't talk about it, it more. Dude, it's a, it truly is. Just arrest me on the spot. Papa Chicago, can you guys please stop having emergencies? Goodness. And I hate that it ruins my train of Dang thought it. every time, too. Hang on, You were on a on. roll. No, it was right there. Um, 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 That's what we've been talking it's about. what we've been talking about. Uh, the idea of just shooting things over longer periods of time. Yes. Whether that's a talking head over the course of a week or a much longer form story over the course of a couple months or, in your case, a couple years, if it's like that big of a zoom out. Like Casey's video spanned 20, 17, 17 years. years of his life. Like that's it's, really, that's just like objectively just so much more interesting to look at. Cause you're, you're seeing the person change and all of that. You're seeing the progress. You're seeing like all of this interesting footage over all of that time, all the different assets, the photos, like it's something like that is a bear to make. Cause you have to go through archives, which is like a whole sucks. other conversation that we've had also of like, Oh my gosh, like how do we, how do we almost like, future proof ourselves for stuff like that like how do we make videos that have that impact but like currently now. going forward <laughs> yeah. instead of having to dig up hard drives from 10 years ago to find stuff yeah but it's it is just objectively more compelling to watch stuff like that yeah but a way a way to find a happy medium in that is the recorded over a week mm -hmm. instead of recorded in a day yes it's it slows you down. Yeah. It makes it more compelling. And yeah. to the viewer, as they see you changing your outfits throughout the week, yeah. different lighting, different uh, scenario, mm -hmm. uh, locations, it's so much more compelling because it reeks intentionality. Yep. If it's just one talking head in your studio cut with a bunch of assets that you just pulled out of your whatever gallery, yep. sure, some of those videos might do well. Mm -hmm. But if you, can, if, if you can prove to the audience through your actions... Yep. That's what's so much more compelling mm -hmm. than trying to fake it. And that's why I think a lot of the series videos on my running channel have done so well because so many of the episodes, we are just pulling footage from the entire week of training. Yeah. So like the one episode is over the course of six, seven days. Uh -huh. And again, super compelling because yep. it's just like, wow, I'm just going on this adventure with you. Yep. And you're showing me every day of the process and I get to be a part of it. And it's not just you sitting in your studio talking about one specific topic. It's so funny because it makes so much sense breaking it down like this. You're like, well, every movie takes place yes. over the course of, you know, days, months, months, years, whatever the plot is. Like, of course it is more <laughs> compelling to watch something to like go, that. To go back to Ryan's ad, yeah. I, all I was thinking yeah. the whole time was just like, wow, this took forever to make. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy they took the time. Mm -hmm. Because I think of the scene where he runs into the house and he's looking through all of the cabinets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And they have that dolly push in shot to the newspaper. And I'm like, this is lit so well. Mm -hmm. This is so intentional. Mm -hmm. The the shot of him looking down like, who wrote this? And then knock at the door and then back and mm -hmm. negative fill here. And I'm just like, this took so much time. Mm -hmm. Like they spent an entire day shooting in this house. Mm -hmm. I know it. And like the Wes Anderson envelope on the ground, blah, 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 like pulling focus as he reaches down, like so good. Yep cannot be done in half an hour <laughs> no literally impossible <laughs> yeah it's a team sport uh -huh. need more people on board need help with every single component of that entire edit i think the toughest part about that is just like someone sitting there being like i'm just trying to start and that is what i want to do mm -hmm. but you gotta but start somewhere less Ex than that exactly yeah and so it's to encourage those people in this kind of moment, yep. we have to zoom out. The things we are talking about right now sure. are years and yep. years of, of investing in different things to come to these moments yep. of the stars. Like I have another call in an hour and a half mm -hmm. that's going to talk more sponsorships on the dock. Yep. None of like, I've had this relationship with this person for years and we've worked together one, maybe two times. Mm -hmm. I've said no a gazillion times mm -hmm. and now I'm like, here's where I can bring something to you yep. and it's very compelling. Yep. And I think keeping that relationship for so long, yep. enduring and saying, no, it's worth it to keep having conversations about this stuff because the one day where I might need to use you as a resource for something that I could bring value for uh, and to you 
on uh, is absolutely profound. Mm -hmm. And so it's the game of just like show up, mm -hmm. keep doing it, make really quality stuff with what you have, and then find yourself in opportunities where the stars line, mm -hmm. you find those intersections and really cool things happening with bigger production and mm -hmm. bigger opportunities. Mm -hmm. And all of that to say, that's why I love YouTube. It just exposes you to so many things. It gives you the ability to connect with other creative people. Mm -hmm. It helps you market yourself. Mm -hmm. It turns you into a better storyteller, mm -hmm. a better filmmaker, better at production. Mm -hmm. There are so many disciplines you find in the platform and making stuff. It's a crime that people associate the word YouTuber with what you just imagine like it is to a teenager. Yeah. Yep. Because of how compelling it is as an artistic discipline mm -hmm. and a a creative and an entrepreneur. It's it's democratizing mm -hmm. doing this, doing production on our level. Mm -hmm. It's no longer just the agencies. Mm -hmm. You have Ryan Trahan making the commercial he did. Mm -hmm. You have down to your level of what you just did with nice. Mm -hmm. Like we make it happen for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We dictate how it's going to go down and how partnerships happen. And yeah, it's just, it, that's, that's what fires me up most about it. It's just so much of you allowing to have control over your creativity mm -hmm. and how you get to do things. Even if you don't want to be a, a YouTube personality even if you don't really care to have a channel that like quote blows up, so to speak, like you said, the process of sitting down and creating a video from start to finish fleshes out so many lifelong skills that you will absolutely apply to other things that you do in your life as a artist, like undoubtedly mm -hmm. you become a much better writer, mm -hmm. more organized. You're probably going to become just a more structured storyteller, which is so fun. Audio, lighting, camera, angles, movements, all these different things that you can just have fun with because at the very beginning, you don't owe anyone anything. Mm -hmm. You can just start. You yeah. can just try these things. You can experiment with different styles. You can be influenced by your favorite DPs or directors and just like try these things. Or you can be influenced by your favorite people on YouTube mm -hmm. and just create stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. It's really inspiring. It's very exciting. And... I actually, I'm, this is one thing that I forgot to mention earlier. I just want to talk about Preston for a sec. Oh, yeah. We could do a whole episode on Preston. Yes. He is the most uplifting, wonderful, incredible human. And talking about telling stories over the course of multiple days, really all of his videos are based on that. But yep. the one he did recently on the, the uh, train. overnight train from, I think it was Toronto to uh, the Rockies. Yeah. Vancouver, maybe? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was Gorgeous. It was super fun. It was very much in his classic style, mm -hmm. but it was so unexpectedly heartwarming. Oh, yeah. It was so sweet. Opening himself up to new relationships with people he never would have met otherwise. Yeah. Like, it, it just, it was, it, yeah, he, I, he's one to watch. The thread of his, his music mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing to a culmination of, it, you know, mm -hmm. revealing the song he made the mm -hmm. entire trip, like, to your point, what you just said about all the skills you use, if mm -hmm. you allow yourself to bring the unfair advantages you have to the platform, mm -hmm. whether it's music or sound design, audio engineering, you or, know, or just you, visuals, you, your, your personality. personality, like yeah. you as a person, like okay. I think that is Preston's biggest strength. Absolutely. Like he's a fantastic editor. He has so many other creative ideas, but mm -hmm. like at the core, like he is, you can just tell he's just such a warm person. Mm -hmm. He's lovable. Yep. And it, yeah, it comes through so easily. He's so vulnerable, so earnest, uh -huh. and it's it's really admirable because you don't see that often. And like that is definitely such a cheat code on YouTube, but there are, there are also people who don't have like that attractive of a personality yeah. and still have tons of success by yeah. approaching it a completely different way. Yeah. You know, whether it's more cerebral yep. or just like really dialed in. I think of like GX8s. Like, oh, yeah. You know, talk about 
insane production value. Yeah. Just like bringing so much to the table or Coffeezilla. Yep. Oh my gosh. You know? Yeah. And just so intelligent yep. and visually compelling. It's like, it's not, it's not a flashy personality at yeah. all. Carlo also stands out yes. in that he's like, I'm not going to try to be someone I'm not. Nope. I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty down to earth, mm -hmm. pretty chill. And the people that like that are going to love it here because mm -hmm. you're going to get that every single time. Yeah. And I could go on forever, but yeah, he's There's definitely, so he's people. someone that, you know, YouTube has been insane for him mm -hmm. and being able to book more commercial work mm -hmm. and extend his Rolodex of people that he's connected to mm -hmm. professionally. Yeah. I, I want to do like a YouTube episode like every month, honestly. <laughs> I feel like that could be a fun current events kind of thing. Totally. I feel like current events within the creator economy, if you Ooh. will, except I don't want to really <laughs> jump on that <laughs> at all. But I think doing some kind of like monthly current event thing just within the artist space, kind of talk about favorite pieces of media that we've seen. Yeah. We could uh, like artists review, to watch. Review Ryan's Candy. We could review... We should review Ryan's Candy. We should review Ryan's Candy. Yeah. Joy Chad Ride. already ordered it. He yeah. did. Oh, nice. Sick. Is that camera dead? Okay. Oh, Sick. Nice. You wanna, let's we fire that it. bad boy up. Let's get the wide angle back going get again. Get the wide angle back. Hey, welcome. Oh, no, 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 it no. takes like seven years for that camera to boot up. <laughs> C200. I, I just, I'm not even wearing my glasses, but I saw dust just fly out of the side. <laughs> <laughs> At that, least that it doesn't dinosaur. have salt water in it. <laughs> <laughs> One of these C70s got attacked by the ocean during the documentary. <laughs> it works still. I think it's the one pointed at me. That's because I did the equivalent of CPR on that camera afterwards. Yeah. Everyone needs a Steven in their life. Uh, I just blew salt water out of its gills. It's no big deal. Wow. <laughs> I just called its vents its gills. That's weird. <laughs> That's super weird. <laughs> well, that was a fun one. That was a very fun one. Um, thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate y'all. Uh, if you are interested in more just kind of like conversational episodes like this or even more laid back, uh, we'll leave a little uh, link in Spotify. You can leave some feedback there if you'd like. If you haven't reviewed the show, please do. We're trying to really uh, elevate the quality of everything we're doing. And part of that is also expanding the reach of Rally Caps in 2024 and beyond. So rate the show, like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're here, leave a little review on Apple Podcasts. Um, be here for us, please. We love you. Thank you. We love you, you so much. You're the best. All of you. Bye. Bye.